Well, it has been a long time coming, and I'm not even exactly sure why I haven't covered the 3070 for you guys yet on oval clocking, but today is the day. And I've included all the data from last, actually it was this week's live stream covering Fish Hash and Meow Pow, but I've also run through all the usual suspects, excluding, I think, just Pyrin. I've had a lot of requests for that lately, but it is just switching or just has switched to Fish Hash. So either way, you can take a look at old Pyrin efficiency, kind of with KLS or any other core algo. It's going to be efficient based on that data. And you can look at the new fish hash data that we have right here as well if you are curious about how these things perform on the new algorithm. So with that out of the way, let's start at the top of the sheet with Flux. And I've actually adopted a new color. So previously I've used a spectrum from dark red all the way up to bright green, illustrating in my opinion what I think the efficiencies and hash rates look like. The hash rate on Flux is not insanely good. It's 68.63 solutions per second. However, if you step it down just a teeny tiny little bit to 62.28, we step up the efficiency to like 40 series levels, over 0.6, which is stellar good. So I have started to include this light blue. Ooh, I know, adding a fourth color. Moving on to Nexa, hash rate I'd say is more impressive. These are actually pretty similar on a lot of GPUs, Mega Hash on Nexa versus Sol for Flux. However, the efficiency here is really good as well. So Flux, we're looking at 0.5 or better. And for Nexa, we're looking at 0.55 or better. Proportionally, still very impressive. On to Kapow or ProgPow, hash rate's pretty good. 30.81 is kind of where these things max out as far as efficient hash rate's concerned. However, if you look at the software, these look efficient, but if you look at the hardware, they really aren't. So there are some samples. I've tested other XC blacks that get above 0.2. They actually get up to closer to 0.22. So if you have a silicon lottery winner, 3070, they can be quite good at Kapow, but really AMD is the master there. We're looking at 0.196 for the best efficiency, but it was at the highest hash rate. This is, I think, the only case I can uh, remember where having no lock core setting is actually better. So zero core lock, 250 core offset, 2800 memory offset, and a soft power limit of 150 watts had my best result there for efficiency. Okay, moving on to MeowPow. This was one of the new algorithms, and you guys probably caught this in the live stream this week. But hash rates are very similar to Kapow, and power honestly seems like it's a little bit lower. However, it seems like this favors NVIDIA quite a lot. I have run this on AMD as well, and I actually have to up the core voltage a little bit on AMD to get the similar result. Whereas on NVIDIA, we're kind of dropping it. So something I'll look at as I continue to run more cards through this algorithm, but for right now, it seems like this is leveling the playing field for NVIDIA versus Kapow. So 30.87 was our best hash rate and 0.239 was our best efficiency. I'm going to set the efficiency kind of threshold right at 0.23. I don't really know what's good yet, but I feel like a 3070 is going to be pretty solid at everything. So we're going to start there. Alephium, the first of the core algorithms, 1.289 giga hash, and we did get all the way up to 19 on the efficiency, which is stellar good. Above 12 is pretty good, above 15 is awesome, above 17 is crazy good, so this should honestly maybe be blue. <laughs> Either way, we'll leave it on green for now. Uh, very efficient at Alephium. Hash rate's just a little bit of a letdown. Uh, Ironfish, this is the new fish hash algorithm, which is essentially, I think, ETH hash B3. So with some Blake 3 rounds with some Autolycos V2 mixed into it. So very much a memory hard algorithm. I've seen a lot of people say, whoa, why aren't you running much, much lower core locks? And a lot of that was giving me a ton of invalid shares. So I ended up getting invalids on four out of the six clocks I used. And I found a lot of this was the case when I was tuning for customer rigs as well with oval clocks overclocks that IO had on over there. I was able to get 815 megahertz core stable with 2600 offset or 8100 lock, but all of the companion clocks with different cores really were unstable. A little bit more safe. This is something that I actually got to run on every one of the 3070s that I ran, and you can see it's very similar power here. 1350 core lock plus 2600 on the memory, 
and the efficiency honestly is not that far off. So if you want something to just plug into your card and go, that's probably what I would run. Radiant back to the core. Sorry, it's a little bit out of order here, but Ironfish used to be a core algo, so it made sense at the time. Hatch rate's good. It's not great. This still gets its teeth kicked in by a 2080 Ti, but uh, not on efficiency. So we're still getting really good efficiency. Above 10 is considered good in my book, and this is running over 30% better than that at 13.06. So quite efficient at Radiant, nothing wrong with running it there, you're just going to get a lot more bang for your buck out of a 20 series card, so if you have both in your farm, probably stick the 20 series on Radiant and throw the 30 series on something a little bit either more core heavy or ideally more memory heavy. Pyrant, I already explained that earlier, it's in between algos, so I'm not going to touch it right now. Carlson, pretty strong hash rate, but a little bit underwhelming, and the efficiency is ridiculously good. Uh, 8 is my threshold, which I probably need to up to 10 or something like that, but very, very good at 17 hash to watt. So that was excellent to see. Dynex, cranking it up. I did this just for you, Hash Force. Running the extra memory, so bumping it up to 6,800 instead of just 5,000. We did gain quite a bit of hash rate, but <laughs> I come back to it, it isn't efficient. We dropped hash rate there, so there's our efficiency there. So I would still probably personally run these at... 4.1 kilohash for 61 hash to watt efficiency. I think that's quite good. I don't even remember what the cutoff is for Dynex right now. 35, which again probably needs to be revised up these days, especially with increasing power costs. But I'll get to revising those at some point. Ergo, phenomenal. 1.48 megahash per watt. That's ridiculously good. Uh, that was at 140 megahash, and then we kind of maxed her out at 158.76. So I really don't think that that efficiency drop is worth it. I would run these at that same 12, 15, 100, 70, 800 clock. It seemed much happier with that. <clears throat> Pigeon. So fair warning, this is running on Wild Rig Multi, not the old T-Rex Cuda 111. Uh, I have had better hash rates with the T-Rex Cuda, but typically the efficiencies are pretty in line. So still not fantastic. I'm going to say it's mediocre efficiency. Uh, if you really run it hard at a low efficiency, the hash rate's actually decent, but still not what I would probably pick for, for Pigeon Coin. ETC or ETH hash, this is what we all, you know, grew up loving 3070s for. 61.68 mega hash. This one has a little bit weaker memory than a lot of the other ones. You probably remember 62, 63 mega hash was pretty normal for a 3070. This one just wouldn't quite do it. However, the efficiency... Really good. 0.55. Anything over 0.5 I'd still consider quite good these days. Uh, for the last couple of Kyla coin, I do have efficiencies here, but I don't mind them enough to know about hash rates, so I have not commented on those. But point, or sorry, 6.94 is the efficiency. We want to see 9. This is another one of those algorithms where the 20 series absolutely slay still. Considerably better than the 30 series. Uh, Conflux, I think they did pretty well. Uh, the efficiency we were hitting there was 0.419. We were doing 58 or 59 mega hash, which I think is good. I think that's pretty good for uh, Octopus. Cortex, 20 efficiency, which is good. That's above our 19 threshold if you were on more efficient clocks. And 1.98 giga hash. Don't know if it's good or not. So <clears throat> the 3070 is still aging very well, in my opinion. I think it's still a way better deal right now than a 4060 Ti or the equivalent price point NVIDIA. But as these things start to get more expensive and as these start to get above, I don't know, maybe like $300 or probably how we should look at it as like ratios to the newer cards. I think at one third of a 4080 Super, these are still the better buy. But once it gets closer to one half, it doesn't make any sense to buy one of these things over a newer, much more powerful, more power-dense card for a lot of mining al algorithms. Fish Hash came out last week. That's another... It's, it's a wrench in the works. So anything could happen. We could get a new coin that launches tomorrow that uses basically vanilla et hash, and these memory-hard cards that do incredibly well on that would be worth a ton more money than something like an ADA GPU, which really has a much weaker memory bus. Just remember, 5000 series is right around the corner, and unfortunately right now AMD has seven, sorry, three? What am I thinking? 7900 series, the Navi 31, RDNA 3. The voltage control is so locked down on those cards, they're not currently worth it for mining in my opinion. So 
30 series, I digress. 3070 is still probably one of the best mining cards you can buy right now. It may be the best for versatility. I will have to rerun some of the Navi 2 stuff. I did just pick up a 6700 non-XT as well. So expect some more weird stuff in the future. But thanks for hanging with me on this longer than average oval clocking episode, if you will. But I felt like the 3070 deserved a little more time to cover because we all know and love it so well. I'll see you guys next week.